Good evening, everyone. Thanks for taking the time tonight to join PSAC members across Ontario. We're going to be talking about where we are in the bargaining process with Treasury Board. We're also here to give you an opportunity to ask questions about negotiations. My name is Sharon D'Souza, and I'm the Regional Executive Vice President for PSAC Ontario, and I'll be hosting tonight's telephone town hall meeting. For those of you who haven't participated in a telephone town hall before, it's a mix between one big conference call and a radio talk show. It gives you an opportunity to ask questions and give us your opinion. So if you have a question, please press star 3 on your phone to let us know that you would like to ask a question live on this call. Tonight we have several guests with us to talk about what's happening at the bargaining table with Treasury Board and to answer your questions. We have PSAC National President Sister Robin Benson on the call and PSAC Negotiator Brother John Wilson. Remember, just press star 3 on your phone to let us know you'd like to ask a question live on this call. You'll also be able to leave your comments and additional questions in a message at the end of this call. For those of you who have just joined the call, I'm Sharon D'Souza and I'm your host for tonight's Telephone Town Hall. Now, let me introduce our first guest speaker, our PSAC National President, Sister Robin Benson. Thanks so very much, Sharon. Hi, everybody. I hope you're having a great evening, and thanks for taking the time to be on our telephone town hall. I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to talk with you and hear your questions on these telephone town halls. This is the um, third that I'm on in uh, less than a week, and it's been very, very exciting, let me tell you. You'll be hearing more about uh, bargaining from others later on in this call. Uh, certainly, uh, John is here, and Sharon will be talking about about uh, mobilization. But before we get into that, I just want to take a minute to tell you uh, that I'm so very proud of the work that our Treasury Board bargaining teams are doing. They're working very hard on your behalf, and quite frankly, it's not an easy job, as we all know how difficult Treasury Board can be. I want to remind you, though, that we are committed to protecting our benefits, including sick leave. So sisters and brothers, we're going to have to be successful in this round of negotiations. And to be successful, it's uh, absolutely critical for all of us to support our bargaining teams. We need to show the government that we're serious about sick leave and serious about our bargaining proposals. That means we need a mobilized membership like never before. And I know that many of you have already been taking part in activities to support the teams and your demands, and I thank you for doing this. But we need to expand our activities to show Treasury Board just how very serious we are. During this call, you'll hear more about March 19th and the actions that are being planned for your region. There are actions that all of you can take part in. Uh, they're fairly low risk, but they're very visible actions. Because, uh, sisters and brothers, quite frankly, every one of you needs to be involved to show Treasury Board just how very serious you are. So, Sharon, I'll turn it back to you now. Thanks, Robin. Now let's talk about where we are in the bargaining process. PSAC has been in negotiations with Treasury Board for our five groups since last July. We've been meeting regularly every two months with each session lasting about a week. While it may seem that progress is slow, we've been successful in putting our issues on the table and we've made strong arguments for the changes we've proposed. The government, and Tony Clement in particular, has been focused on making sick leave the main issue in this round of bargaining. Now, sick leave is a big issue. It's an important benefit that all our members need. The government's been putting out a lot of misinformation on this topic, but we've been able to push back against their spin. We've shown that sick leave abuse is not a real problem. Instead of addressing make-believe problems, this employer should be working on making our workplace healthier. For example, by taking real action on mental health issues. According to the Mental Health Commission of Canada, 
about one in five Canadians will experience a mental health problem this year, and many of these problems relate in some way to the workplace. After years of job cuts and cuts to programs and services, we know our workplaces are becoming increasingly toxic. The objective of our proposal is to implement the recommendations contained in the National Standard for Psychological Health and Safety in the Workplace. We want our union management to work together to identify what may be psychologically harmful in the, in the workplace. We want actions to implement practices and that support and promote good mental health. We've also tabled proposals that would offset the negative changes made to health and safety protection by the 2013 Budget Bill C4. Child care is another important issue for many of our members, and we have a demand that responds to our members' needs and the growing shortage of quality, regulated, and accessible child care spaces across the country. We put forward almost 30 proposed improvements to the Workforce Adjustment Appendix, which governs how staff reductions are made in the public service. We know how stressful the cuts to jobs and services has been. They've had a profoundly negative impact on the mental health of so many of our members. We're proposing a much more transparent process and much more consultation on how to minimize voluntary, sorry, involuntary departures. We are also proposing that seniority be used if reductions in the public service can't be achieved through voluntary departures. This is a common practice in both the public and private sectors. And our members wouldn't be forced to compete against each other for their own jobs. These are just some of the issues we've been talking about so far at the bargaining table. Now, I want to remind you to get in line to ask a question. Just press star three on your phone, and I'd like to start taking some calls right now. So far we have Laura Lee from Kingston. So Laura, are you, Laura Lee, are you there? I am. Hello. Hi. What's uh, your question? I, my question is uh, with regards to a pay equity study that the Treasury Board um, participated in with the education group. Are you there? Yes, I'm here, Laura. Okay. So what's your question on the pay equity study? I'm wondering where it's at because I think until we get that solved, we, you know, still are struggling with that. Is that anything you're aware of? Okay. Um, Robin or John, would you like yep. to... Uh, Sharon, hi. It's, it's Robin Lorley, and I think what you're actually talking about is not a pay equity study, but you're talking about the pay study uh, for the EBs. That's just my guess if you're talking about the education group. Uh, that's certainly been looked at at negotiations um, several times, but John, you may have more of an update, but um, Lorley, I, I think it's really the pay study that you're talking about. John, on the pay study? Hi, Laura Lee. I think that, that you're, you're exactly right, Rob. And this is uh, in regards to a pay study. There's pay studies at other tables. I am the negotiator at the SV table. We are, are presently going through a pay study as well. Uh, we have uh, just finished now meeting with, uh, with Hay Group to get the uh, pay study complete. I think it was important for all tables when we were dealing with pay studies to have the most current information as we possibly could have. So it's not like we could have taken these things on back uh, a year ago, that it was very important that when we went down this road that we had the current information and therefore that's where we're at in most of these pay studies. We're at the completion now of getting the data, we're going over the data and we are now sitting down with our bargaining teams in order to now go over these so that we can present them back to the employer. Back to you, Sharon. Thanks a lot, um, both Robin and John. We have a uh, next caller is Richard from Pembroke. Richard, are you there? Yes. Yes, I am. 
Hi, Richard. What's your question? Question is the uh, voluntary separation from the government positions. I work at CFP Petawawa, and I notice a lot as a tradesman, and I notice a lot of the trades have uh, got uh, financial buyouts to leave. And I'm just wondering, what about the rest of the trades that are still at the base? Are they going to be offered an incentive to leave, a cash settlement to leave? So, uh, John or Robin, would you like to uh, respond to Richard's question? Plain and simply, this is John, and just plain and simply from the bargaining table, we have dealt with no issues in around buyouts. So, uh, and there has been no discussions at this point in regards to that. Uh, Sharon, if I might, it's Robin, and the, uh, just to, to uh, uh, continue in, uh, with what John is saying, um, what, what we're doing at the bargaining table is actually wanting to negotiate improvements to the workforce adjustment uh, because we don't want any uh, public service workers uh, to lose their jobs. We don't want this employer uh, downsizing. and We don't want them uh, impeding uh, our ability to provide quality public services uh, to Canadians. So uh, there's not, from our perspective, uh, what we want to do is protect jobs. Sharon, back to you. Thanks a lot, Robin and John. But I just want to start by saying many of you have been engaged in showing your support at your workplace for our bargaining teams, and I really want to thank you all for that support. As negotiations continue, it's going to be more critical than ever for all of our members to stand together and keep up the pressure on their employer. So many of our members are already taking action. On March 19th, locals will be holding a rally during their lunch hours at noon at the following locations. So in Sudbury, at the Federal Building at 19 Lisgar Street, in North Bay, at the Canada Centre, 107 Sheriff Avenue, in Sturgeon Falls, the Municipal Building at 225 Holdridge Street, also at the Judy LaMarche Federal Building in Chatham at 65 William Street South. And in Toronto, we have at 4900 Young Street, 2555 Sinclair Avenue. And in um, Angus, we have uh, CSB Base Borden. At 1130, they'll be doing an action as well. And these are just some of the locations uh, where activities are taking place in our region with many locals holding their own actions. So please contact your closest regional office for more information. And I just want to encourage all locals to organize whatever activity that may work for you. We'll be back in negotiations the week of March 23rd, and we need to show the employer that we're serious about our demands. And remember to talk to your coworkers, encourage them to participate. We also have an opportunity to elect our employer with the upcoming federal election. This will be crucial for our negotiations. So I think this is a perfect time to take a quick poll of our members on the call. Our first question is, what have you been doing to now, up to now to support these negotiations and your bargaining team? Please listen to all the options before you press a button. So press 1 if you have signed up for email bargaining updates. Press 2 if you've worn a sticker to show your support. Press 3 if you've taken part in an activity at your workplace to support the team. Press 4 if you've done all of these things. So once again, the options are press 1 if you have signed up for email bargaining updates. Press 2 if you have worn a sticker to show your support. Press three if you've taken part in an activity at your workplace to support the team. And press four if you've done all of these things. So thank you very much for taking the quick poll and we'll get back with uh, your results. But I just wanna remind you that you can get in line to ask a quick question live on air by pressing star three. And I do believe we have Janet from Burgessville. Janet, are you there? Hello, Janet? Yep. Are you there? What's your question for Robin or John or myself? 
Well, I had left it already as a comment, Sharon. Um, primarily, it was it was um, the article on travel time. I'm not sure if we've reserved on that or not. Um, however, I have the pleasure of working through all our basic uh, Treasury Board agreements, and I find that it's discriminatory between the tables in that if you're traveling on for the employer, regardless whether you're in the SV group or the PA group, um, we should be treated the same. So I would like them all to mirror the SV if, if that would be possible. It, I know it's not a negotiating demand, it's more of a comment, and it's not really a question. But um, I, I really, I, that one particular clause troubles me um, regardless of our classifications. So thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for that, uh, that comment, Janet. And um, if I can, Robin or John, is there anything that you'd like to say to respond to Janet's comment? John, have you got anything? Are you the negotiator? No, I think, that, I think that it's just a fair comment to make, and uh, and we have been working as well in order to 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 make sure that uh, the proposals that are tabled are are uh, communicated amongst the different state different tables so that we can uh, can adjust to these issues as they come about. So so there is discussion amongst the different groups. Sharon. Okay. And Robin, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, Sharon, I think John's covered it. Okay, thank you. And thank you, Janet, for uh, your statement. I think it's very important to hear our members' voices. So next we have Saeed from North York. Saeed, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi, what's your question? All right, so my question was um, that since we have been hearing in uh, bits and pieces about uh, the government trying to uh, restructure our sickness benefits and bring in short-term disability to make it more uh, comparable with the private sector. Um, has our union uh, agreed to any of the government's proposal at this point uh, when it comes to our sickness benefits? Or are we, uh, what I mean to say is, are we fighting for the status quo or are we you know, yielding to the government's uh, pressure and with all that negative media campaign they have about, uh, uh, you know, federal government employees' sickness uh, benefits and putting a dollar amount and all that. Thank you very much for that, Saeed. Robin, would you like to respond to this? I certainly would, and thank you very much for the question. Uh, first of all, let's be really clear. Uh, it's Tony Clement, the uh, president of the Treasury Board, uh, who um, more than a year ago uh, spoke outside of Parliament and, and talked about uh, private sector and the need for us uh, in terms of our sick leave to be similar to the private sector. Well, we told Mr. Clement that, that we were and that our uh, uh, sick leave was an insurance policy and that although he had indicated to the press and anyone else that would listen that we used 18 days per year, uh, I very clearly articulated that we could not possibly because we only earn 15 days a year, 9.375 hours uh, a, a month, quite frankly. So the parliamentary budget officer uh, did a report, did a study, and when he came out with his report, uh, he clearly articulated that Mr. Clement and, and the government was indeed wrong in what they were saying about the uh, sick leave provisions that we have contained in our collective agreement that has been there for more than 40 years. Uh, you know, quite frankly, this government has put proposals uh, at the table with respect to uh, sick leave, and at this point in time, we're not entertaining those proposals. We very clearly uh, have told them that we want improvements and not concessions. So until the government can say to us, or Treasury boards and negotiators, what's wrong with the uh, provisions that we have within our, contained within our collective agreement, we'll be looking at uh, striking improvements. We're, we, you know, certainly we have uh, put at the table uh, demands for uh, a healthier workplace, uh, demands that where we can balance our work and family life, uh, demands around uh, mental health, uh, demands with respect to improving uh, public services and not decreasing the public services as this government is doing. And I, and I might uh, uh, add as well that all of the unions that are involved with the federal government uh, now 
now, proper, uh, the National Joint Council, have all signed a solidarity pact uh, in agreement that we will stand together, that we will not have concession bargaining at the table, that we will keep our sick leave, and uh, that we will move forward negotiating collective agreements that our membership can be proud of, because this is about uh, uh, dignity and respect, and it's about this employer respecting the work that you do. And certainly from our perspective, uh, we're not entertaining discussions uh, on sick leave at all. Um, over to you, Sharon. Thank you, Robin, and thank you, Saeed, for uh, that question. But uh, now let's hear the results of our poll question. What, has been, what have you been doing up to now to support these negotiations and your bargaining team? 41% of you said you have signed up for the email bargaining updates. 21% of you said you have worn a sticker to show your support. 13% of you said that you've taken part in an activity at your workplace to support the team. And 25% of you said that you've done all of these things, which is fantastic. I want to applaud all of you. But now I invite you to speak to a, a coworker, another member, and invite them to engage in the March 19th actions within your workplace. So now let's go to another caller. We have Shannon from Borden. Shannon, are you on the line? Yeah, I'm here. Hi, Shannon. What's your question? My question, I know the big thing, the big topic right now is about sick leave. However, um, being in public service for only eight years, I've had some experience with priorities. And my question is, has there ever been any kind of negotiations on priority um, as much as we have the title that we get priority, my experience priority doesn't mean anything. Okay. Thank you for that question. John, did you want to respond to this? There's not much that I can respond to in around uh, around the question of priority. At this point, uh, uh, we have not dealt with it at the table. We uh, uh, there will be discussions that will be upcoming in around this issue, but there's been no discussions up to this point around that issue. And I'm not sure what's happened in the past in regards to it. Thanks, so, John. Robin, maybe you can add something in regards to that. Robin? Uh, no, I think that John has covered it. Sharon, thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Shannon, for that question. Next, we have Ray from Sudbury. Ray, are you on the phone? I'm here. Hi, Ray. What's your question? It's uh, regarding the um, the approach, I guess, the negotiations. I'm just going through some of the uh, past notes from the PSAC, and I understand we had filed a uh, unfair labor practice against the government back last July, and I don't haven't heard anything back. Are we still proceeding with that? That's a legal process. Is that still ongoing? Was there a resolve to it? Was there any any outcome from that? Okay. Thank you for that question, Robin. Uh, yeah, I'll start it off, and John may have something to add. But, Ray, I think that what you're asking is the unfair labor uh, practice, the unfair that we filed with respect to uh, yes. the sick leave because the uh, government had come out and emailed uh, all of our members, uh, done an email blast, if you will, and put on a couple of websites that it was a fait accompli, that we were having a, a short-term disability, and that is not at all the case. Um, we, uh, you know, as I said earlier, will continue to fight for our sick leave. And so... Uh, uh, it's still uh, to be heard. Uh, we've had uh, a, a couple of days now in terms of, I want to say, hearings and quotation marks, but uh, it's, front of, it's in, in front of the board that we've made some presentations, and we don't have the actual results of it yet. John, do you know when the results are expected? No, and I think that that's, I think that you've covered it off. I think that we were, we uh, have been to the board. They have given their arguments in regards to the sick leave unfair, but there are several other unfair labor practice complaints that were made now over the last uh, month as well in regards to uh, access to, to workplaces where we've been denied access to come in and speak to our members. So there are several unfairs that are, are, are being heard before the board now, and we haven't got the results. We would expect to hear them before we get back to the table, especially in regards to the sick leave issue. Thanks, uh, Ray, for such a good question, and I'll thank uh, both John and Robin for their responses. And next we have Simon from Toronto. Simon, are you on the phone? Hello. Hi, Simon. 
Jim. Hi, Sharon. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for taking my call. Sharon, Robin, and John, how are you guys? Um, I'm from Toronto, local 645 with the RB, and I just was wondering, I got a question today in regarding to all this grievance going on or more like the negotiation that is on the table that is happening every two months. But the thing is, I know that there's the election coming up in October, and we know that we want to fight until the last second possible. But do you think there's any possibility that we might get an answer prior to the um to uh the election happening in October or do you think we might go even further beyond that? That's an excellent question, Simon. Robin, would you like to uh respond to Simon's question? I will. Thank you very much, Sharon, and thank you, Simon, for the question. I mean, first, uh, let me be clear. We're at the table, and uh, what we want is is a fair, equitable uh, collective agreement. So when we go to the table, we expect negotiations back and forth, and, and as we all know, you know, it takes two to tango. Uh, Treasury Board has not been the easiest of employers to ever negotiate with, and uh, they're not being easy right now either. But certainly, we're looking for uh, no concessions at the table, which they have uh, their sick leave there. Uh, we're looking at improvements to the sick leave. We're looking at improvements in other areas, workforce adjustment. Um, we just heard about travel time, you know, shift uh, premiums, etc. The list goes on because we uh, did an input call to all of our members asking for what they thought needed to be improved within their collective agreements. And we received hundreds of demands that are of of vital importance to to our membership. So we are at the table now. I I can't say whether we would be able to get a collective agreement before uh, the next federal election or we would have one um, afterwards. Uh, To be really clear, the federal election can be no later than October 19th, 2015, unless this government chooses to break the law again. Uh, You know, it could be in June. Maybe they'll try to make it later. I don't know. They don't seem to follow their own laws. But We'll see uh, certainly what takes place. Um, and, and at this point in time, we're going to negotiate the best collective agreement that we can on behalf of our membership. And we owe it to our members to make sure that we do that. And we'll do that in every way possible. So that's, that's it for that, Sharon. Thanks, Robin. And thanks, Simon, for that wonderful question. But I think it's time to do another poll. Our next question is about participating in activities on March 19th in support of our negotiations. So please listen to all the options before you press a button. Press 1 if you will help organize and participate in an activity on March 19th. Press 2 if you will participate in an activity on March 19th. Press 3 if you will not participate in an activity on March 19th. Press four if you need more information about what's being planned before you decide. Once again, the options are press one if you will help organize and participate in an activity on March 19th. Press two if you will participate in an activity on March 19th. Press three if you will not participate in an activity on March 19th, and press four if you need more information about what's being planned before you decide. So next we have King Kim from Kingston, Ontario. Kim, are you there? Uh, yes, hello. Hi, hello? Hey, Kim. Uh, very good, thank you. Um, my question was uh, relative to our pension. Um, I'm bringing it up because it was mentioned in the newsletter that we all receive, and I just wanted um, a clearer idea of what type of changes they want to want to make to our pension. That's an excellent question. Uh, Robin, would you like yeah. to respond? Okay, thanks. Thanks very much, uh, Sharon, and thank you, Kim. Uh, just to be clear, pensions are not negotiable, and so they're not at the negotiating table. Uh, if you're speaking to our union voice, one of our uh, election issues, if you will, is about retirement security, and that falls in line with the Canadian Labour Congress, of which we are an affiliate. And so we are proposing, as are all unions in this country, to increase the contributions to the Canada Pension Plan and thus increase the Canada 
pension plan for those who, who uh, you know, certainly that's all that they rely on in terms of their retirement. Because, quite frankly, we have seniors uh, living in poverty because of, uh, uh, you know, not having uh, pension plans uh, from within their workplace. Um, there have been some changes to the pension plan uh, that was uh, done through legislation by this government. And so where you could go at 55, you now would have to stay till 60. Where you could go at 60, you now have to stay at 65. And that's after a certain year. That's, uh, you know, it's a certain age and a certain year. It's for new hires, if you will. Um, but what is affecting everyone is that they made changes uh, to our contribution rate. So while we used to be 60-40, 60% of the employer and 40% uh, the employee or us as union members, it's now increasing uh, so that it'll even out to 50% uh, on each of our parts. The other thing that this government has done for no rhyme or reason uh, is announced that uh, you'll have to wait until you're 67 for the old age security. So certainly they did that without consultation of any Canadians. Uh, in fact, uh, the Prime Minister was in another country. I want to tell you that he was maybe in Switzerland or France and uh, just announced uh, out of the blue uh, with, with, as I said, no consultation with any Canadians, any seniors groups, any anyone, that, um, that the old age security, the uh, age to qualify, uh, has moved from 65 to 67. So that affects, that came into place uh, two, three years ago, and it, it affected uh, those born uh, in the uh, mid-60s. So that's the changes that have come about so far, but as I said, uh, we we don't have the right to uh, uh, negotiate uh, our pensions, uh, but we certainly have the wherewithal to um, lobby to uh, save our pensions, uh, to ensure that we keep the sick leave because next they will come uh, at the, after uh, us for the pensions. Sharon, I think that that sort of should suffice, I hope. That's a great answer, Robin, and that was a fantastic question, Kim. And um, we're going to announce the results shortly on our poll, but I just want to remind everyone, don't forget that you can ask um, a question live on air by pressing star 3 on your phone. So let's go to another caller. We've got Christopher from Scarborough. Christopher, are you on the phone? Hi there. Yes, everyone. And uh, thank you for doing this. I think this is a very interesting uh, use of technology for all of us to have a say and to hear your voices. I have a couple of practical questions. The first is, what actual pressure or specific pressure can we place uh, on the Treasury Board uh, with realizing that they have back to work legislation in the specter uh, in the background whenever we address them? And secondly, how do we appeal or do you have any plans uh, working or in the works regarding the public, a strategy to get them on side understanding our position and why uh, we would be uh, negotiating and wanting more or at least trying to deflect from receiving less in our upcoming um, packages? That's a great question, Christopher. Uh, Robin, would you like to uh, respond? Yeah, thanks very much, Sharon, and thank you, uh, Christopher, for the question. So let's start with pressure. What pressure can we uh, put on the government? Well, we have to be visible. We have to be visibly supporting our negotiating teams. So whether that's wearing a sticker, whether it's wearing the red bracelet, whether it's doing uh, information pickets, whether we're having uh, coffee parties, the, the whole uh, idea of that is to show Treasury Board that we're determined to have um, uh, health, uh, healthy workplaces, safe workplaces, and a really uh, uh, dynamic collective agreement. It's all about being informed about the bargaining that's taking place. So this telephone town hall, as an example, is being used as a mobilization tool so that you all know what's taking place at the table right now and that you're prepared to fight to keep what you have and make actual gains. Now, in terms of back-to-work le legislation, let's be really clear. I'm 35 years with the federal government or uh, agency because I'm the, from the Canada Revenue Agency, and we've always had the threat of back-to-work legislation. I mean, it's, you know, it's certainly something that's there when you, you work for uh, the government. But I have to say that, you know, irrespective of having that threat there, we need to stand up to be counted. We need to ensure that uh, our bargaining teams are supported and that our our 
employer uh, understands that we're very determined. Um, I, you know, I, I'm not even going to worry about back-to-work legislation because they don't do that unless we're in a, in a strike position, quite frankly. And we're not in a strike position right now. And I don't know that we would ever be in one because if we can put enough pressure on this government now to show them that enough is enough, I think that you can circumvent a strike. When you talk about public support, I think that it's really important uh, for us to be all involved in the We're All Affected campaign. That I mean, that starts with talking to our membership one-to-one-to-one, to one to one, coast to coast to coast, but it also is about talking to the public. The public understands now what this government has done. They know what services they've lost. They know that there are Veterans Affairs offices that are closed. They know that there are veterans crying out uh, for help from this government, and, and what does the minister do, save and accept for uh, yell at them uh, you know, on Parliament Hill not all that very long ago? So, you know, we need and have been um, speaking to the uh, public about uh, what's taking place, about the services that they don't have. They know that if they're seeking employment insurance, that they're going to have to wait upwards of 12 weeks or not longer for that check to put food on the table and pay the rent. And what we need to do, quite frankly, is look to the next federal election, which, as I said, is, you know, who knows when it will be, but I think that the latest it can be is October 19th, 2015. And we need to look at, uh, quite frankly, electing an employer that cares about working people, that cares about Canadians, that cares about the services that we provide and not overworking us because they've laid off uh, individuals uh, and, and, you know, doing the more work with less. So we need to talk about these issues with, uh, with, with you know, our friends and our families and our neighbors. I hope that you've all received the Our Union Voice where, uh, you know, we speak to the issues. It's about health care. It's about child care. Uh, it's about retirement security. So unions, and us included as PSAC members, um, are looking for the greater whole. It's not just about ourselves. It's about all Canadians uh, and those uh, today and tomorrow. So I'll turn it back to you, Sharon. Thanks, Robin. And uh, I'd also like to thank, um, you know, for that great question. It was fantastic. And talking, like Christopher, really talking about pressure and public um, and how to get them on side, that's I think on everyone's mind. But I think it's time now to give the results of our poll. And the question that we asked is, will you be participating in activities on March 19th? 11% of you said that you will help organize and participate in an activity. 25% of you said that you will participate in an activity. 15% of you said you will not participate in an activity, and 49% of you said that you need more information about what's being planned before you decide. And, you know, sisters and brothers, I just want to say that really says a lot. So I invite you to get educated. For those of you who need more information, please contact your local executive or the, any regional office that is close to you, and we'd be glad to provide you with that information. So, Robin, do you have any last remarks for our members tonight? Well, certainly. Um, thank you very much, Sharon, and, and thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, to be on this call. I, I really appreciate it, and uh, brothers and sisters, I, I really um, thank you for uh, coming on the call as well. It's always so good uh, for me as your national president to find out what your questions are, you know, what your thoughts are, where, where you are in the scheme of things. And, and I have to say that um, this is really important for you to learn about uh, negotiations and what's taking place at the table. I also want to thank John Wilson, our uh, national negotiator, for being with us tonight and helping us uh, answer the questions. I think that if we uh, uh, all stand up together, this is uh, a time where we'll be able to fight the clawbacks in our collective agreements. This will be a time when we'll be able to uh, look at how we go to the polls in the next election and look at all of the candidates and ask them the tough questions about public services and and public service workers. So brothers and sisters, I ask you to stand together, get out there on March 19th, show everybody what's going on, and let them know that, uh, uh, you know, this is uh, about um, 
not just saving our collective agreement and negotiating enhancements, but about uh, making changes. So uh, certainly, Sharon, uh, you know, I can add more later on. You might have time yet for a couple of questions. We'll just see how we go. That's fantastic, Robin, because um, I've just been told that the questions keep coming in, and really, you know, if members are that engaged, I think we should take a couple more questions. So I have Lessa from Warren, Ontario. Lessa, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hi. Yes, hi. Question. Uh, my question is, in regards to the uh, paid duty, um, well, injury on, on the job, uh, one of the clauses that we have in the contract that we have right now. Um, I am a, a, an employee that was injured on the job, and because, and I feel like I didn't get any support because um, I didn't get any payment for several. I was off for over a month with no no help, and none that that clause didn't seem to affect me. Is there going to be any negotiations in regards to the? Duty, the paid uh, duty, the injury on duty. Okay. Thank you very much. Sorry, please go ahead, Lessa. Do you have a further question? Well, I don't think I, I expressed my question the same way as when the lady asked me about it, but um, it's, it's more about, you know, because I've lost all my sick time because of the injury on duty and had to actually take time off, personal time to go for physiotherapy and different appointments like that and it, it reflects bad on me because I had to take time without pay. Okay. Lessa, this is really important and what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to contact your nearest uh, regional office or you're welcome to give me a call directly. Because and, and, and you might, Sharon, if I might, it's Robin. Uh, John, I think you could explain just a little bit about uh, the injury on duty because I, I think that we, you know, we're looking at improvements in, in the collective agreements in all areas, are we not? We certainly are. Like, I mean, the injury on duty issue is, is really one of now also uh, 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 um, going back on WCB and, uh, and, and making sure that, that, of course, they're doing their part in regards to this as well. We have several proposals. Uh, for injury on duty leave. Uh, we have not discussed them yet at the table, um, but they will be coming up now in the next in the next go around. So uh, Sharon's suggestion of now uh, having Lisa go back and and uh, and give more detail in around what her issue was will help us out when we go to the table and talk about this issue. Thank you, John. Uh, Lisa, uh, what I'd like to do is uh, have a conversation with you and have you contact your regional office as well. I'm going to uh, give you my information. It's 416-485-3558, extension 231, which is um, the Toronto Regional Office and my extension 231. And I'd really like you to contact me so that we can uh, really, really uh, look into this as I mentioned, but thank you very much for being brave enough to come out and talk about what you went through because no worker should have to deal with this. Next we have Cheryl from Dundas, Ontario. Cheryl, are you there? I am here. What's your question, Cheryl? Well, I actually, when uh, they took the thing at the beginning, it was a comment, but I've thought of a question since. Is it okay if I talk about both? Of course, please go ahead. Okay, I'll start with the question. When I reviewed the, the employer demands to the TC table and did an analysis, like a thorough analysis of it, and virtually every single clause they had recommended wording that weakened the different clauses in the collective agreement to the point where if we were to file a grievance against any of those articles, we would lose. So I just was wondering if, and I suspect that it was those changes were proposed across the board to the other tables as well. I didn't have a time to review them all. But are they making any concessions to the wording as per the employer's proposals in like as a trade-off to try to hang on to some of the stronger uh, benefits? And so that's your question. And you also mentioned you have a comment Yes, my comment was kudos. I am so happy that you have talked.
pioneered within all of the unions the proposals to mental health. I'm a senior executive member of the union and thereby people come to me on a daily basis and the culture of bullying and harassment within our department and I suspect across the board under Treasury Board is astronomical, damaging. I am seeing people lose their jobs and lose their minds and their families and it's a serious, serious issue. So I want to applaud you and give my thanks for being pioneers and going forward with this proposal for mental health. Thanks a lot, Cheryl. I know uh, it's really important to hear that members are on site. So, John, would you like to respond to Cheryl's question? Sure. What were some of the specifics that you're talking about in regards to your question that came at the TC table? Okay. So well, I haven't got the the proposals right in front of me, but it's it's all things. That's what makes that worries me that they could be accepted by the bargaining teams. I sent a, a big analysis to our TC bargaining team, so they're aware of it. Uh, perfect, Cheryl. It's it's Robin, and, and I want to thank you for doing that analysis, Cheryl. Um, let me be clear that when the employer comes to the table, irrespective of what they put there, it's always a concession. They always want to weaken, uh, you know, uh, any of the, the clauses contained within our collective agreement. So, you know, although we don't have time to go into specifics from, you know, SV to TC to PA, because, you know, they will have, and, and when you have time, Cheryl, um, that you will see that they, they put forward proposals always to weaken uh, what's in the collective agreement. We have no intention of weakening what we already have contained within our collective agreement. We, uh, you know, this happens every time we go into bargaining uh, and every time we come out stronger. And, the, and I see no different uh, happening now. It's about coming out stronger with our membership being mobilized and our membership wanting to take actions on March 19th that are very, very visible. And I thank you for raising uh, mental health in the workplace because the public service survey uh, certainly indicated that there are huge problems within the workplace. And, and uh, I did a fair amount of press around that uh, survey, uh, that there's harassment in the workplace, there's mental health and issues. And so uh, we certainly, as PSAC, as the leaders and, and as your negotiating team members, are looking at what's in the best interest of our membership. Because quite frankly, one in five individuals who answered the survey said that they were being harassed in the workplace. And if that doesn't impact your mental health, I don't know what does. So while the employer does put forward proposals that tries to weaken uh, our clauses within the collective agreement, know that we will stand strong with each and every one of you together to fight off this employer. Back to you, Sharon. Thanks a lot, Robin, and thank you very much, Cheryl, for uh, your questions and your comment. Next, we have Nancy from London, Ontario. Nancy, are you there? I am. Hi. Hi, Nancy. Uh, kudos to the uh, previous sister who mentioned mental health, and I endorse, fully endorse the JLP uh, mental health workshop. We recently had it at our, at our workplace. But my question is, um, Treasury Board has recently or redefined the excluded members clause. What does my union stand on that? Robin, would you like to respond to Nancy's question? Uh, yeah, I will. Thank, thank you very much for the question when we were talking about essential services and what this, uh, this uh, government thinks that they can do. As many of you know, they introduced in an omnibus bill, uh, Bill C-4, actually uh, it, you know, enhanced uh, uh, essential services or designation, as we normally call it. So at the time that they did that, we made presentations uh, to uh, parliamentary committees and to the Senate saying that the government was wrong in trying to do this, that, that uh, you know, everyone had the right to uh, freedom of association and the right to strike, and so uh, really they couldn't deem everybody essential uh, because they had changed, sweeping changes without consultation. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's when Mr. Clement had tweeted that I was a union boss and that I wanted co-governance when I was trying to explain to him uh, what consultation looked like. Suffice it to say, I was also very clear at the time when we were having our discussion that 
we would fight this all the way, and that, in fact, the Saskatchewan Federation of Labor was fighting just such a bill in Bill um, 5, which the Brad Wall uh, government had introduced a number of years ago, where the Wall government was going to decide who was essential and who was not. And as a matter of fact, they would make them essential whenever they wanted to, and as many people as they wanted to deem essential. So I had explained that it was going through the courts and that it was actually being scheduled for the Supreme Court and that uh, perhaps they should pay attention to this. Um, at the time, they did, uh, they, they being the, you know, our employer Treasury Board, uh, clearly articulated to me that yes, indeed, they would have intervener status, uh, uh, as would we, the PSAC. And I can say that we were, um, I feel, uh, instrumental in the arguments put forward to the Supreme Court, and we won at the Supreme Court. So we, w the Supreme Court ruled that the Bradwall government in Bill 5 uh, was indeed uh, wrong and that uh, there would have to be changes made. And it's a very similar bill to C4 about our essential services. So we have, of course, filed our um, legal challenge and we'll go through the court proceedings um, the way that the Saskatchewan Federation of Labor did, and um, I'm quite sure that we will win. Now, I have uh, suggested to the government that they should uh, change their, their uh, legislation around C4 in light of the Supreme Court win. Uh, they haven't done so yet. I did tell them to repeal it. Uh, I've been pretty vocal about it. Um, but we will win. So if they want us to continue, then we shall. And uh, we will win because it is the right thing. Sharon, back to you. Thanks, Robin. And I'm looking at the time right now, but I do see one last caller that I think we should, in fact, hear. We have Wendy from Sioux Lookout. Wendy, are you there? Hi, yes, I am here. Thank you for taking my call. And what's your question, Wendy? My question is regarding term employees. Uh, currently, I am a term employee, and I've been a term employee for the past six years. In the past, term employees uh, would roll over to indeterminate after three years of service. And that uh, clause has been uh, halted by our current government, to my understanding. And um, my concern is, is is the term employee, is this, this system going to be abused or is this something we're going to relook at having term employees roll over uh, into indeterminate? And the main reason I'm asking is because myself at one point uh, throughout my career, I have experienced um, bullying and harassing, harassing behavior um, from, from a manager. And um, going through that process, um, until the process was completed, I had always received annual or one-year terms. And then when I started making complaints about the, about the behavior that was um, happening, my term suddenly went to three months with no, with no explanation until the process was complete. Um, so I feel that it's almost as if when you're a term employee, the employer has... Um, much easier way of disposing you if you've complained too much. <laughs> I hear you. And Robin, would you like to respond? Um, actually, Sharon, I think that that would probably be better placed with John because I think that, uh, you know, uh, we did do some negotiations around the term employees. We did have the uh, rollover to indeterminate after three years, and then they came in with the drop. So, John, have you got anything new from a table perspective? Yeah, we are actually uh, uh, discussing that as well. We have proposals uh, now going to the table and around term employees to, first of all, incorporate a term employee, uh, employee policy right into the collective agreement and uh, and we're attempting to address a lot of these issues that we're now starting to to hear from terms and so I'm happy if you have now provided us with some of your issues because the uh, we have a placeholder in around uh, uh, proposals for term employment and, uh, and and like I say uh, what we are looking to do now is to incorporate uh, the term employment policy into the collective agreement and negotiate now better terms in around those issues so uh, these specific issues if you can pass them off to us as the bargaining team so that we have the opportunity to view them that would be fantastic thanks a lot John and thank you Wendy and I can tell you being having been a term employee for over seven years myself in the federal public sector and dealing with three-month contracts, it's extremely difficult 
to plan and live your life. So I do understand, sister, what you're going through. So Robin, any final comments? Uh, thank you, Sharon. You know, I have to get almost the last word in. <laughs> I want to thank everyone so very much for being on the call and for your excellent questions. And I think I said that just a while ago. But, uh, you know, just if if, if I might, um, we need to really be mobilized, brothers and sisters, and, and we need to be out there on March 19th. And any other day that your local executives ask you to take some sort of actions, as I said, they're pretty low risk right now. Um, it's just to show the employer that we're serious about the bargaining and that you support your bargaining team because it's really, really hard for them to face an employer, uh, you know, cross the table with the no's, no's, and no's and the concession, concession, and concession. And I really ask you to talk to your friends and your families and your neighbors and be proud of the work that you do to serve Canadians and let them know about the work that you do. And I say that because, you know, as a CRA uh, employee, um, I didn't always necessarily talk about working for tax because we're not necessarily the most um, popular. But, you know, Canadians uh, appreciate the work that public service workers do, and it's just about uh, really talking about it and making sure that uh, everybody understands uh, what this employer is like. Because, brothers and sisters, the next election is around the corner, and you need to look at electing your employer, and your employer should be labour-friendly, and your employer should care about working people in this country uh, and should care about Canadians and the services that we deliver. So I want to uh, thank you very, very much for taking the time to be on this call. Thank you very much, Sharon. No, thank you, Robin, uh, for being with here with us tonight. And I also want to thank our negotiator, John Wilson, for being with us to help answer some technical questions. And um, I also want to thank all of you PSAC members who took part in tonight's call the public services you deliver, and the fact that you stand up every day for your rights. That's extremely important. So I just want to remind you once again that we're doing mobilization activities throughout the region on March 19th. I ask you to get engaged. And uh, please take a minute and leave us a personal message or question after this call ends. This is your opportunity to have your voice heard. So have a good evening, and thank you once again for taking the call. Good night.